Did you know the US Air Force once built a supercomputer out of PlayStation 3s? Yeah, back in 2010 they cobbled together almost 2,000 of the consoles to make what was then the 33rd most powerful supercomputer in the world, and all to process high definition satellite imagery. So let's dive into why this PS3 supercomputer was even possible, and why we'll never see anything like it again. So the magic behind this PS3 supercomputer cluster is a feature called Other OS that Sony included in the PS3 letting users install Linux. It was perfect for nerdy tinkerers and apparently also the US Air Force. But in 2010 Sony pulled the plug on this feature citing security concerns after hackers found a way to exploit this to play pirated games. One of those hackers was a guy called GeoHot aka George Hotz who cracked the PS3's encryption using Other OS and caused Sony a major headache and also a lawsuit for himself. So why use PS3s for a supercomputer? Well, they were cheap compared to actual supercomputer hardware. The Air Force could snag a PS3 for around $400 at the time, while similar tech would have set them back $10,000 a pop. Plus, those PS3s were pretty power efficient, using only about 10% of the energy that a traditional supercomputer would have needed. Talk about a budget-friendly setup. And the PS3's IBM-powered cell processor, though famously derided as a waste of time by Valve's Gabe Newell, was actually great for parallel processing, with its seven synergistic processing elements SPEs, it could handle a lot of simple math fast, kind of like a GPU today, perfect for crunching numbers in a supercomputer cluster. So why won't we see another supercomputer in the form of PS3s or even PS4s or PS5s? Well, two big reasons, first security and also money. Other OS was kind of a security risk and Sony wasn't thrilled about hackers using it to jailbreak their system, that's why it was disabled in the first place. And then there's the money angle, see consoles were often sold at a loss and Sony and Microsoft bank on making their profits back through game sales. But when the Air Force bought 2000 PS3s they weren't planning on doing any gaming. That meant Sony was still losing money on each unit but with no way to make it back. So while the story of the PS3 supercomputer is a bit of fun tech history, it is also a relic of a different time, one where tinkering with consoles was a bit more open and companies didn't mind losing a few bucks for the sake of science. Today, not so much. Be sure to subscribe to XDA on YouTube if you like this little trip down memory lane.